All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a little bit, I've been a little bit sick, so my voice was uh, pretty much gone, and I couldn't really talk for more than like 30 seconds without coughing. But we are back. I am feeling a little bit better. A little bit still congested, but it is what it is. But we're going to be doing videos again like these where we talk about threads. We're going to do it a little bit different now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a lot of threads right over here. As you can see, a lot of different threads. And um, we're going to talk about all of them. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each single thread or each single topic that we cover into shorter videos for people who want the shorter videos. And then um, pretty much the longer video, which is like this whole video right here where I talk through all the threads, which will be pretty long video. That one will be out when all the shorter videos are out uh, for the people who want to just listen to the full, long, unedited version. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, people who like to put stuff in the background, I usually like to do that with longer videos as well. So, yeah, we're going to try to do uh, both. So without further ado, let's get to the first thread. And by the way, all threads will be in the description. And uh, for the shorter videos, the thread in uh, the topic that's being covered will be in the description as well. Alrighty, so first of all, on Tail World, your campaign map is boring and static, but you can easily solve this. Okay, let's see what he has to say. So uh, this person says, a lot of emphasis has been put out on the aspect of time and Bannerlord. Characters grow old and die, borders are redrawn, but the, ma uh, the map remains completely static no matter how much time passes. I agree, okay. This can easily be solved by allocating some time by implementing more progressive development of settlement and village projects. You already do this in game with castle and city walls. As you can see, the walls change depending on the wall tier on the campaign map. That is true. Also, um, you know, if let's say the walls are broken before the siege, when you go into the siege, the walls are obviously broken uh, as they were before. So, okay, I agree. Um, all you need to do is implement the same dynamic changes to campaign scenery where it makes sense, such as a garden and orchards. What are we talking about here? Okay, we got, uh, let me see. So this is a before. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, so change those up a little bit. Even added a little road over here as well. That would be kind of cool. Maybe the more prosperous a town gets or a castle and all that. Or if you let, let's say, you up the food stocks, whatever. Little, little things like this could change. Okay. I don't think that's a bad idea. Okay. Then we have another player saying, I agree completely, but it took them over seven months to add keep battles, which was a vanilla feature from Warband after they announced them. If this is going to release before the... Okay, here we go again. Well, the difference is, it's like, it was released with Warband, but if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm not mistaken, Warband wasn't in any beta, was it? Maybe I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. It was, I'm pretty sure it was part of the era where games didn't really go into beta like they do now. So... It's not the best comparison, but I guess. This is ideally something modders will do, will be able to accomplish. They essentially did in Warband at least. One of the medieval total conversion mods had a feature where the number of castles slash villages changed over time. Okay, but he's not talking about the number, but okay, I kind of... Look, here's the thing. I agree and disagree. So, uh, I agree with the fact that it would probably be a good mod. I think it would be a mod that would be uh, well-received, and maybe it should stay as a mod. Uh, I think it would be possible to make in the game as well. I don't think it would look exactly like this. There probably have to be some compromises, kind of meet in the middle type situation. But um, I think it would be a pretty good mod. And I think it would be something that uh, could be easily done. Uh, moving some visuals around, creating some uh, original visuals for a modder. I think it could definitely be done. So, I don't know. I think it's a good feature overall. I think it should definitely be in the game in one way or another. Then we have another person saying the Kalrig expanded map is almost official map, at least for those who d who don't have afraid to use mods. Okay. The mod is beautiful, people are saying. Essential mod. Okay. They just screwed up too many things that keep piling onto this mediocre game. The graphics of Bandlord map are far better than... Warband, yet it feels lifeless, generic, and small, and no sense of variety. It's 70% of the same, boring mount. Okay, dude. But, like, the same could be... <sighs> Listen, man. I'm gonna say something. 
I feel like a lot of people have like this nostalgic um, view of what's it called, Bannerlord, where it's like it's so good that pretty much um, not Bannerlord, that Warband is so so good that Bannerlord just doesn't stand a chance. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what they do, it's always gonna be mediocre. You know what I'm saying? And Warband's always gonna be elite. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, it's kind of like how I viewed games back when I played as a kid. I thought they were super, super good, this, this, and that. And then, you know, I played some games that I played before because I recently got a, uh, what's it called? I got a PS1 and a PS2 recently. I found it at a garage sale. And um, I hooked them up. I started playing some games. And let me tell you, man, <laughs> it was not how I remembered. It was not how I remembered. But I do agree, there's still stuff to be added to Bannerlord that was, you know, pretty good in Warband, you know what I mean? But I think they've added some pretty good features, you know what I mean? Call me, call me, you know, you know, call me out if you want to, but I think they've added some pretty good features into ba Bannerlord, and I think they keep adding them every single patch, so, hey, you know? Uh, what else we got? Uh... And I think that's about it for this, but I agree. This should probably be in the game, whether it's a mod, whether it's in the game um, officially. I think it would be a cool thing to have in the game. All right, moving on. What happened to Tail Worlds? All right, Jesus Christ. All right, I remember this one because I skimmed through all these. I'm going to keep it real with you. I saw uh, to conclude over here, so I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to read like this, this, and then to conclude. I see a lot of numbers in here. And last time we saw one of these with a lot of numbers in it. Oh, this one looks very good too. I see all the capitalized letters and stuff. Let's read it. Oh, let's see what great, great stuff um, you know this person has to add to it. All right, let's do it. What happened to Tail Worlds? So, so let's go back in time. Disclaimer, this post is completely useless and just for validation of my own opinion. So if you don't agree with this, I hope that you run into a big group of bandits and lose all your equipment. Nice. All right, man. I'm still going to judge it. All right, let's do it. The beginning. Tale Wars Entertainment was founded in 2005 by Armagon and Ipek Yavuz. I probably said that wrong. As a small development studio with a focus of indie games, shortly after being found, uh, founded, Tale Worlds announced their first major project by the name of Mountain Blade. This game would eventually release on September 16, 2008 and sell somewhere around a million copies. For uh, a first major project, that's absolutely huge. As someone who's played the original Mountain Blade, I can say for the first time it was released, it was a great game. It was the first game besides the Total War series where I was able to play and or simulate battles with, with a relatively large quantity of troops okay um as a reaction to the large amounts of success and money that mountain blade was accumulating terror worlds entertainment announced the sort of expanded enhanced version of mountain blade by the name of mountain blade warband in january 2009 on march 20 uh 2010 warband was an, uh, officially launched in na with the eu release being on april 2nd of the same year all right now, I'm actually reading a lot more of this. I like how he wrote this, you know what I mean? I'm going to keep reading it. Mountain Blade Warband, a huge success. With the hugely successful launch of Warband came numerous awards and a lot of money. I have not found any actual sale numbers, but it is completely said, but it is commonly said on the internet, so it must be true. He didn't write that. I said that. That Warband has sold somewhere between 6 to 7 million copies as of 2021. That's a big number. Which would make a very, very, very successful game. For comparison, Grand Theft Auto 4 sold between 17.5 and 20 million copies. With GTA 4 being released two years before Warband, according to estimates. Now that might seem like a big difference, but you have to remember, Tale Worlds was a little indie studio back then, and Grand Theft Auto uh, is literally the flagship franchise for one of the biggest development studios in the world. That is true. Let's say Warband sold 7 million copies and GTA 4 sold 17.5 million. Let's do 18 million. All right. That means at just over five years, Studio sold 40% of the game that one of the biggest studios in the planet sold. That's huge. Oh, my God. 
all right, man, well, where's all, where's all the, where's all the, you know, the, the, the theories and all the big ideas? Like, well, where is this, man? This just looks like a promotion. What, what's going on? We're not going to talk. We're, we're not going to jump into how they're stealing money and how this is a complete scam. Where is it, bro? I'm skimming through this, bro. I don't, I don't listen. Backstory, backstory. It is what it is. Uh, all right. Seems cool. Seems cool. Bannerlord was supposed to be an enhanced version of Warband with new and enhanced features, better graphics, and larger battles. Instead of an even better version of Ready Great Warband, we got some rushed and neglected game with mediocre graphics, tons of bugs and crashes, a broken economy, with, with and robot lords. In other words, just a pile of butter. All right. So here's the thing. Um, what's it called? I think the graphics are pretty good, and the fact that you can um, actually, you know, I'm not saying all computers, because obviously, you know. For newer games, you need kind of a better computer. It is what it is. You know what I mean? You can't have the same old computer for 10 years and expect it to keep running games. But um, it does pretty good in performance, even for low-end computers. And for, you know, medium to high-end computers, you can really have a lot, a lot of units. And it looks really good. Like, all the battles are happening. You know what I mean? I think they the optimization is really good there. Um... In terms of it being like an enhanced version of Warband, I get that it was kind of like marketed that way, but in a way, you know, the devs have stated plenty of times that the, that it's not Warband 2. Technically, yes, it's part of the franchise, it's part of the series of Mountain Blade, um, obviously, in the name. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, it's Mountain Blade 2. Technically, but, you know, as this person even said before, we had a Mountain Blade then if we had a Mountain Blade Warband, and now we have a Mountain Blade 2. So, technically, that's already three of them. And there's only one and a two. You know what I'm trying to say? So, it's kind of like... I can see where people get it from, but the devs have made a couple statements stating that, you know, it's not going to be exactly Warband 2. We'll have similar uh, features, of course, but it won't be exactly Warband 2. You know what I mean? It won't be like uh, feature for feature, this for that. You know what I mean? But um, and I know a lot of people don't like that because obviously, like I said before, you have that nostalgia of, you know, playing it back then. But unfortunately, that is how it is. Alrighty. What is this? We got the whole multiplayer not working, bugged, all that. We get it. We get it, bro. We got it. Alrighty. Oh, this is good. This is good right here. I am close to 5,000 hours on Warband. Insane. And most of the time I spent uh, on the game was on multiplayer. Sure, at the start of a new game, everyone wants to do a new campaign sandbox mode, try new weapons and graphics for themselves. But after like one to two months, most pe uh, most people will have done their walkthrough of the game and might want to head over to multiplayer. That is true. They load up multiplayer, join the TDM, captain mode, okay. And yeah, they got a pretty good multiplayer community. I do agree. Alrighty, now to conclude. To include this absolute useless text of the development of Tale Worlds, I'll have to say that a year ago I was quite optimistic that Banner would be a new warband, but better, no, just better. Nowadays that opinion has shifted completely. Well, the problem is when it came out, they made that statement where they said it's not going to be exactly like warband. You know, I'm just saying, you know, I feel like a lot of people have still carried over that mindset, you know. I'm just saying. Um, I am barely playing Bannerlord anymore, and in the current state of the game it is in, I would definitely not recommend it to any of my friends that don't already own the game. I just can't help but think that Bannerlord was a massive cash grab. Oh no. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Y'all ready for my take? Oh, because I'm ready for my take. Look, I'm going to keep it real with some of you guys. Bannerlord's a pretty good game. Um, for people who play Warband, this might not be the game that they like, you know what I mean? Some people played Warband do like it, but it looks like a lot of people in the forums don't like it. And, uh, I'll say one thing, it's a pretty complete game. It will get you a lot of hours in the game, uh, and you, you know, you can start a game and you can finish it. So it is fully finished, it has very good optimization, performance is great, there are features, they keep adding features. So, you know what I mean, uh, to call it a massive cash grab... I very much disagree, you know, uh, what's it called, review-wise, it's reviewed very highly by a lot of people, and, um, and lastly, 
Just because you don't exactly like the game doesn't mean it's a scam. You know what I mean? Just because you don't like the product doesn't mean it's a scam. It just means sometimes it's just, you know, not part of your fancy. Best way I could explain it is like, bro, if you have a Steam account and you've had it for a couple of years, look how much games you have. Uh, go into your profile. I don't know exactly where it's at, but look look at all the games you got, right? Because a lot of games you get from Steam sales or you see a game that's $60 and they're selling it for $4.99 for the next two days and you're like, oh gotta get it even though you know you're never gonna play it but it's a 60 dollar game and it's like the first time you've ever seen it that low so you're like yes i gotta get it and that's how they trick you but uh go look into your play time on all of your games and realize how many times you just you know bought a game and you just weren't feeling after point zero i mean point seven hours you know what i mean does that mean it's it, it's a scam or it's a cash grab no you just weren't feeling it but um i also believe a lot of people who make this uh, statement of just being a massive cash grab have played a very lengthy amount of time of Bannerlord as well. And, um, you know, hey, that's what I got to say about that. But all right, then he has PS 1.6 when? So, yeah, so this was a little while ago, but I did want to visit it because what a, what a wall of text. What a wall of text. We got a plus one, of course we do. Um... Uh, make big group to make big game, get big problems, release games to appease crime fans before they forget about game, make big money, game still hard to finish, game takes a long time to finish, buyers get annoyed and disappointed, game still takes a long time to get finished. True, except the whole, you know, buyer gets annoyed and disappointed. It's like a very minute, uh, oh, that's a good word, that's a big word, man. Minute. I don't know if that's used in the right context, but... I would say it's the local, no, I said local, um, what I'm trying to say, the vocal uh, majority of players on the forums when it comes to like the whole player base is very, very, it's like a very small percentage of people who are, who are completely upset with their purchase, you know what I mean? And um, hey, I've called some people out and I'm going to do it again. If you are so against Bannerlord and you're so against this, bro, I want you to go to your Steam. I want you to, because um, I know some of you guys, you guys have been commenting on my videos. Go to your Steam. I want to see a screenshot of your playtime in the past two weeks. And I want to, and I don't want to see Bannerlord on there. Because a lot of you guys are like, ah, this game is trash, bro. I don't play it anymore at all, bro. It's so bad. I haven't played it since uh, 1.4. It's just gone downhill, man. Nothing's getting changed. We only got sheep skins. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ. Uh, sheep retextures, I meant. Jesus. I want to see your playtime. That's all I got to say. But all right. Uh, let's, keep, let's keep it going. Uh, I don't see how a small studio can mess up so badly on their flagship game and still survive. If it, th it takes them nine years to develop this game, a game that's broken, the studio won't be around much longer. Uh, I disagree absolutely completely. Um, I think it's a good game. I think it works. I don't think there's much broken about it. Yeah, there's some stuff that's broken, like the uh, obviously the siege towers, which I think should be fixed. But does that mean the whole game is broken? No, dog. That just means you're being a little dramatic. I feel like you... you I went through many playthroughs in uh, Bandalord. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going up to close to, like, what, 500 hours, which is rookie numbers for a lot of uh, other people that I know. But all I got to say is... Hey, I play. I played a couple times from the beginning, all the way to where I, where I own everything, or all the way to where you know me as a vassal. You know, we we win the whole map, and it's you know what I mean. It's not broken. Yeah, some sieges. I'm like, oh my god, I lost like sixty extra men because of it. I laugh it off. I keep playing. You know what I mean. Sometimes stuff like that happens. Am I saying we should just not look at it no more and not try to fix it? No, I I think it should definitely be fixed. But I'm um, trying to say just because. The siege towers don't work that good. That the whole game is broken in a way is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. But um, the whole mess up, I don't think they messed it up. They have very good reviews on uh, Steam. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're in top selling a lot. You know what I mean? If you go to the top sellers of Steam, they're, they're always on the first or second page. Which is, you know, you might be like, oh, well, it's on the second page. It's not bad for a single, you know, I'm, I'm going to say single player game. Because the multiplayer is not really popping. People aren't really messing with the multiplayer. It happens. But for, you know, a single-player sandbox game, I think it does pretty good. 
I think he's doing pretty good on it. And it has like a consistent amount of people that play it daily. So that might just be me. Uh, What else we got? We should have known it was a lie when Baron Lord came out without no banners. Yes, true, true, true. I believe it. Um, so we need to sue Tails for scamming and let other game design studio to finish Banner Lord. Oh man, look at this guy who knows absolutely nothing about nothing. It's actually a, a, a bro. <laughs> hey man, how to, how to say your, uh, what's it called? What's, what's those memes where it's like, how to say you're this without actually saying you're this. It's like how to say you're like literally 11 years old without saying you're 11 years old. Because this is how you see, you know what I mean? This is the course of action that they should take. This is exactly how it will be fixed. You know what I mean? This is the way to go. And this has a possibility of happening. Jesus Christ. I love it. Oh, this is sensational. What a, what a take, man. What a take. Hey, you know what? I agree, man. You know what? Let's hold, let's hold all these game companies of it. Uh, I said available, but like accordingly, you know what I mean? Let, let, let's, or accountable. I said accordingly. Accountable. That's the right word for it. Let's do it, man. I agree. All right, next one. Boom, boom, boom. Recent disasters. Oh, no. Hello. I have read things from people who say they were banned for disagreeing with Tail Worlds. Oh, my God. I love this one. Oh, my God. The censoring. Oh, here we go, boys. This is it right here. They're on the Steam forums now. What has happened to Tail Worlds make us fall so low? Even if these people broke rule. <laughs> what a take, dog. What a what an absolute Jesus Christ. What a take. Oh. Yeah, this is beauty. He states, even if these people broke rules, we know that they have good reason for being angry at Terror World. So why ban them instead of fix game? Ah, yes. Because banning them takes forever. You know, to be honest, it does take forever. Uh, I think there's so much leniency. Uh, from the people on the forums, uh, I, I mean, from the, um, what's it called? Pretty sure the devs don't actually do the banning. They're probably the community managers and stuff like that, and the moderators, they probably do the banning. And I'll be honest with you, it does take them a very long time to do the banning. You're right. Uh, they should do it a lot more faster and a lot quicker, uh, depending on what people do. But a lot of these people get a lot, a lot of, uh, what's it called? A lot of, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? Warnings. And uh, time out days, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you got two days off, you get three days off. And they keep coming back and doing the same stuff that got them into that position. And uh, I'm going to just say it like this, bro. You know the rules. Don't break them. It's so simple. Why did these people get, um, uh, what's it called, banned? They were misinforming people. They were causing outrage that didn't need to be caused. They were just being plain out negative no matter what the conversation was about. If the conversation was about this, they will change into how this game is absolute trash and they don't want to play it anymore and this and that. Vocalizing absolutely nothing that will actually help the game get fixed. That's why, man. That's why they got banned. You know what I mean? It's not a good reason. It's not. There's plenty of people on this forums that have done so much good. You know what I mean? Who, who who actually try to help the developers, who actually have good suggestions. They've never been banned. They never got warnings. They just follow simple human rules. Like It's not like these rules are super like, oh, you can do this and you can't do this. It's literally just be nice. That's the rules. Just be nice. That's it. Like, I don't know how hard that is a rule to break. Like, come on, man. And they say, did I waste my money on the game? And what is Terrell is doing with my money? Are any Americans trying to sue them yet? Bro, who cares what they're doing with your money? They can do whatever they want with their money. You got your product, my guy. You know what I mean? Th this is another thing. Listen, bro, I used to work in the service industry. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something about the service industry. The best thing, or like even just the, you know, fast food industry, whatever industry you want to work. I worked in both, but um, I have more server uh, experience. When people somehow see like, how can I explain this? Uh, here, here, for example, the restaurant that I used to work at, they used to make 100K uh, a week, you know, average, 100K a week. It's very good for a restaurant. You know what I mean? Uh, that's how much total sales they would do, um, you know, without anything removed. But still, 100K is very, very good. It's a pretty good profit margin, uh, obviously, for the owners and all that involved. But, um, you know, and I made pretty good money there, too. And the one thing that I never understood, people walking in 
getting like literally like a, a um let's say a burger for instance which is you know it's kind of a cheap menu option it's all you know i have no nothing against it i'm just saying like they go in they get two waters two burgers their their, their total is like 24.99 not 24.99 like let's say 24.87 after taxes and they get mad they get mad over something and they're like oh man you know, I work so hard for this money and you think I'm just going to give it away to you like the, and then they try not to pay for the, the meal because something happened that was wrong, but they somehow still finished their burger. You know, I mean, they still got their product. They still finished it. But at the end, when they didn't want to pay, they're like, oh, this is my money, man. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if you don't, you know, help me pay less then oh, I'm going to take my money somewhere else. And it's like, dog. It is so annoying hearing that because it's just like at the same time, it's like, bro, come on, man. Why are, you, why are you being so extra? Why are you doing all this? You know what I mean? And it's just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's like, it's like when they say, do you not want us to come back? And, and everybody in their head who like works for, you know, either the restaurant or the fast food place is like, yes, we do not want you to come back. And the same way that this person's like, did I waste my money? Oh, are people trying to sue? It's like, dog, why are you being extra, bro? You know what I mean? Why are you being extra, bro? If you really hate it, just go. Just go. Go to another place. You know what I mean? Go for it. You know what I mean? But they never do. They come back. I'm telling you, that's how That's how it is. That's how it is. I've seen people literally be like, I'm never coming back here again at a restaurant being extra loud, extra everything. And I see them next week. It's a crazy concept. But um, did you waste your money on the game? I don't think so. Um, I think you uh, enjoy it. I think you have some frustrations, but uh, yeah, you want to be on this forum if you really, really hated it. That's just how it is. And he says, "Are any Americans trying to sue them yet? For what? Uh, I think a lot of people think. Well, technically, in America, you can sue anybody for anything. Does that mean it will be successful? Probably not. Uh, but you can definitely do it for anything. Um, if you're trying to sue them for, I guess." Uh, What's it called? <laughs> Getting people uh, banned on their own forums for breaking the rules that have been, you know, made and probably that you have to agree upon whenever you make your account. No, I, I don't think they can get sued for that. Unfortunately, I think you kind of, you know, when you made that account, you were like, I agreed to these rules, and then you broke them, and then you know you got banned. <laughs> it's a crazy concept, I know. Uh, they say Terra doesn't mod the forums. Yeah, they do have moderators for that. Oh, here we go. I am angry at Terra Worlds 2. Oh, this is so good. I'm angry at Terra Worlds 2 and so many other users on the forum. We are still here. Still effing about the... Is this effing? What is this? What? What is this word? You should have kept the first letter. What is this word? Still something about the game. What? I don't know. I don't know what that word. Okay. You get that you break the form rules, you get banned. It's as simple as that. I know it's a crazy concept, dog. It's a crazy concept, dog. <laughs> yeah, and he's saying a lot of these guys did it repeatedly, like repeatedly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. He said, "My man, Steve, how you're using alt accounts? That's another thing. People used to get timed out for like two days." And they couldn't even wait two days. They would just make new accounts and then get completely permanently banned because if you try to evade a temporary ban by making a new account, in most places, you would get permanently banned, like IP banned. That's how it works. So uh, don't try to do that. You're not very slick. Um, can't do roguery in the forums. True, man. Uh, what is this? The fact that Banlord is a grift thread has not been long kind of shows terrible stance of silence and criticism. Yeah, they let it in. They respond to it. You know what I mean? Like, and they keep it up there. The only time they really, really like, you know, clap somebody is when you're literally just like, you're being ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, if you have some kind of like opinion, this, this, and that, go ahead, voice it. But it's just like, when you're being super ridiculous, super annoying and trying to like, you know, it's, it's like, what do you expect? That's what happens, man. You know, it sucks. It really sucks. You know what I mean? Let's move on. All right. How many of us still have Bandalord installed? Oh, let's do it, baby. Yes. yes. Come on, man. Uh, we did a thread. We have I do, 54%. I don't, 39%. Uh, 
Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what that last one is. That's a... Uh, but I, I, I expect most people on the forums would get mad to, uh, you know, have that, uh, <laughs> that man in mind. But all right, let's uh, move on. All right, so... <clears throat> person says i'm curious because after so many minor little updates i thought to myself well this game is just taking up space on my hard drive right now so i'll reinstall it reinstall it later when it finally receives an update of significance okay i hey hey hey, hey listen 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 i feel you i feel you hey look i feel you you know what i mean i feel you you know there's some games out there that i do want to play but i kind of have them uninstalled right now because i want to play them later but they kind of you know what I mean? Take up a lot of space. You know what I mean? I agree. Hey, I agree with the statement. I agree with the statement. You know what I mean? But if I was so invested and made like daily posts on the forums, which I know this guy, you know, does. I'm going to say daily. I'll say, you know, couple weekly. Uh, I feel like he still plays it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it out. I feel like he still plays it. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back. We're going to left off right where we started. We had a couple of threads that we already went over. We're going to go over a couple more threads. Uh, what's it called? My son is back to sleep. I had to end the uh, previous video early because he had woken up. But uh, yeah, let's get right to it. So we had a couple more threads. I'm going to start off with this one. It's, it's the same one that we ended off at. And uh, yeah, as you can see by the title, how many of us even still have Bannerlord installed? So what he's saying is uh, pretty much, you know, hey, I need some extra space and I'll probably reinstall it later. And I'm going to keep it honest with you. Like I said in the other video, I kind of agree. You know what I mean? Um, there's a plenty of games in my Steam. Uh, what's it called? What do you call it? Inventory. My game inventory. My game library, right? That are uninstalled right now because they take up so much space. You know what I mean? So low-key, I agree with this. I feel like this this kind of title kind of tried to imply like, oh, you know what I mean? Why well, have this game installed? It's not good. But I low-key agree with it. I'm not going to lie to you. But let's see what other people have to say. All right, so another person says, I only have Bandlord installed to check what's new with the mods I am tracking. Okay. Uh, I have it installed, but haven't probably played it. Okay. In less than half of a year. Us last played February 20th. Bro, why are you on the forums, dog? Well, I guess. Eh, I don't know. I feel like that's cap. I feel like that's cap. I don't know. Look, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. If I haven't played, um, well, no, eh, I don't know. I guess I guess I'm different than other people. I don't know. But I feel like if I haven't played a game in that long, I wouldn't really post on the forums and go about doing all that. But uh, I don't know. That's up to the person. You know what I mean? I do come back to games after, you know, like a year or two or three. Uh, What is this? I do, but only in hopes that they will improve the game. I think they will. I have no shortage of space on my PC. Lucky you, bro. You know what I mean? Like, mine has a lot. I have like uh, one terabyte. Well, it's probably not a lot to some people. I don't know if this is a lot. Let me know. So, my uh, SSD has like, I think, half a terabyte. And then my hard drive got like two terabytes. You know what I mean? And I'm running out of space. That's because, you know, I, I, I edit videos and stuff like that. And those, you know, usually like a video over like... 15 minutes is like literally a gigabyte and a half already. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but I, I am running out of space. I install that. I won't install it until they add a significant amount of new content and fixes and improvements to the game. Okay. Uh, I'm a multiplayer player. Is that right? So, I guess answer your question. That's tough. <laughs> uh, why am I not surprised? Half the people here don't <clears throat> even have the game installed. And from what people... And from the people who have the game installed, I bet the majority don't regularly play the game. I attribute this to factors like lack of features, not fixing bugs or issues that ruin the game since launch, performance issues. On a positive note, Ben is still a good game with great potential. Keep improving it. Hopefully, it'll be an amazing game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I just don't think it's the majority. I'm going to keep it real with you. Like I said, the forms is a very small minority of people. But, um, yeah, I agree. Alrighty. Oh, what else we got? This this thread's been kind of dry, bro. I ain't got no like this thread's been kind of dry. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm going. Oh, here we go. Here it is. I am about to uninstall the game if Tailward Losers 
don't fix the main build crashing bro i'm gonna keep it real with you guys like i'm gonna keep it real real with you guys <sighs> what do y'all be doing to y'all games man because i've had my game installed since the beginning of the whole uh what's it called launch of the game you know what i mean and i've played every single patch that's come out and you know what i mean like and, I, and I, continuously bro i've only crashed like twice like the whole time that the game has been out and you know what i'm saying in beta like i feel like some y'all be over reacting there's no way i guess maybe i don't know because i feel like some people they keep saying like oh every every new patch i'm crashing wildly every time on this on that i don't know i guess on startup maybe but i don't really count those as like crashes i feel like the game didn't load in properly and you could literally just press like one button on steam and it'll fix the you know those type of crashes i guess if you have a lot of mods maybe that kind of makes sense and if you do have a lot of mods just make sure you're not on auto update on steam that's probably what's causing a lot of your crashes by the way um if you keep updating the beta uh with your mods uh that are you know not optimized for the new beta obviously it's going to crash your game so uh make sure um you know you stay on the same version that the mod is compatible with i feel like a lot of people have a problem with that and then they get mad at the developers saying Oh, well, you know, uh, my game keeps crashing because of this and this. No, it's it's crashing because you keep trying to play the new beta with your old mods installed. So uh, make sure those are, you know, compatible. Or wait until the mod creator makes a new patch for that. Uh, I keep it installed to see how the early access will progress, but I haven't touched bandwidth since they added that cool cinematic. That was not too far ago. Um, it is installed. I have 100 gigabytes of data relative to Bandlord, and I'm okay with it. Also, it is a lot, actually. I don't even know how much Bandlord has, but if it's 100 gigabytes, that is quite the uh, amount. Two months without updates, so I'm waiting for something decent. Didn't play for like half a year. Has it been two months without an update? Because obviously this was on... Oh, no, this this guy right here. This is this guy right here. Let me see if I can find what else he said. Where is it? Oh, this guy right here. Look what he said in this thread right here. So we need to sue Terrorworlds for scamming and let the other game designer, game design studio to finish Bandalore. That's the same guy, right? The same dude. <laughs> nah, but uh, when was the last uh, update? Hold on. So we just had an update. This was four days ago, obviously, but before then... When was the last update? Uh, it was 1.6, 1. 1. right? Where is it? I'm literally looking through my uh, video to see when I uploaded. It was a month ago. How are you going to say two months without updates? It was a month ago. It came out on... Uh... Hold on. June 11th. Oh, this is July uh, 28th. I guess it's two months. I guess. I guess. All right. Okay. I'll give it to him. Uh, it's such a mess. Okay. Uh, install. Never uninstall that. Got a dozen of mods. Bravo. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. Let's move on. Does Terror Worlds fear this, their own community? Oh, man. Oh, man. Do they fear it? Um, let's see what they say. All right. Uh, he posts, does Terrible's fear us? Question mark. Listen, man, I'm sick and tired of you guys making threads and then like putting like one line or be like, or like they put like what the title says. It's like, dog, come on, man. Add some substance, man. Add some, add some spice. Come on. What is this? I'll be a player saying, no, we are probably minions to them. The vast majority of buyers aren't in there and they will never hear what we say. In my opinion, Steam reviewers are stronger. Steam reviews are stronger. You're damn straight. You know what? That's some good realization, man. I like that. Only a fool wouldn't be afraid of the people on these forums. Uh, take this part out right here. Take this part out right here. And this is actually a true statement. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Take that part out and listen. You got a good, good take on your hands. I'm not gonna lie to you. They don't fear this community. They just don't understand. They just don't understand us. 
<laughs> you know what that reminds me of? It's, it's like uh, when you, you ever seen like, this, I don't think this ever happens in real life, but I feel like um, they portray in like those corny like TV shows on Disney Channel and stuff like, my parents just don't understand me. They just don't understand what I'm going through. It's, it's, it's not a phase, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Uh, but he states, and what people loved about their previous games, it seems. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are really stuck in the past. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I feel like a lot of people are stuck in the past. Uh, they're reliving the dreams they had in their head about like how great this game is. And I'm not lying to you. Warband was a great game, but I feel like people uh, keep it real, kind of overhype. But uh, that's a talk for another day. Uh, or maybe they do took the business in to make the game more accessible to increase their sales. Or maybe make it more accessible to increase their uh, player base, which in, I guess increases their sale, but it depends how you look at it. You know what I mean? Looking at it at, the, at this greed perspective, it's kind of, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? There's so, there's so many ways to make a game which um, can satisfy a company's greed. You know what I mean? You got microtransactions. You got always multiplayer games. You know what I'm saying? Stuff of that nature. Uh, games that like pretty much make it harder to grind and uh, pretty much give you like this boost that you can buy to grind it. Those games are, you know, those games make it more accessible to increase their sales. Um, but Terrible has said previously and like they've, they've continued to say this like, like they want to have uh, microtransactions eventually in multiplayer, but they're going to wait until it's finished. Now, a game, in my opinion, that would really want to capitalize on their sales, on microtransactions, all that. When this game fully, when this game came out in beta, they should have a fully working multiplayer that they keep driving to the player. Literally, as you're playing single player, you're going to have a notification like, "Hey, you want to try our multiplayer?" And then they would have a full shop made before the um, what's it called? Right when the beta launches, they would have a full shop enabled, all that. That's what I can see uh, from a game company that's, you know, focused on just their sales. I don't see it as a company who says, listen, until all the goods, until all like the actual features are done, we're not going to implement any, you know, skins and stuff that you can buy. You know what I mean? So like this whole um, talk about, you know, them doing this just to increase their sales. Same thing with them going to council just to increase the sales. I think is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Because if they really want to just increase their sales and go purely on money, um, they could have made this game literally. They could have said, "Forget the multi. I mean, forget the single player. Let's go full, full multiplayer." Because um, that's doing really popular nowadays. Let's make it so whenever uh, they play the game, they have to be always online, uh, so we could keep throwing ads at them to buy stuff from the store. Uh, so we could ruin. Uh, so we could actually stagger how fast they level and then actually give boosts and then if they want extra we'll give them a couple boosts for free you know every single day if they keep coming back and playing our multiplayer and um also we're gonna slow it down as time goes on so then they have to actually buy boosts and then you know that's what companies do that i think are uh, in it for the sales you know what i mean and there's a lot of companies that do it and uh yeah and i'm gonna keep it real and a lot of people play these games because i play them too who doesn't who doesn't play some of the top 10 uh you know let's say games on steam right now that are mainly multiplayer you know what i mean like yeah people play it they're they're enjoyable but they also have a lot of practices that um are not that good but i don't think that has to really do with tail worlds in my opinion here we go oh yes there let me get my let me get some coffee first oh my god Ooh. All right, this person says, they already got our money. Oh, here we go. Why would they be afraid of anything? Most of them are having the dream jobs, minimal effort. Some of them probably aren't even aware of the forums. Yes, because coding is so easy. Making a game from scratch is so easy, bro. You know what I mean? Minimal effort, bro. Like, it's super easy, bro. You know what I mean? Because if this guy was in charge, he would definitely, uh, what's it called, pump out updates just like that. You know what I mean? Every single day we would have another update. Every single day we'd have a huge new feature added. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. And then he says, only thing people can do now is not buying their products anymore. Big deal. I don't think Armagon even cares. He got old. Oh, good one. Uh... <laughs> What the hell? It's the small things that makes me crazy. We're talking about a company which is so out of touch with its product and different about most basic details and features which needed to be implemented. Nah, I think um, you're a 
little bit out of touch. I'm going to keep it real with you. you know, I, it looks like you're a little bit out of touch. You don't know, you know, the, the time it takes to actually get games like this out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, probably took a little bit too long. It is what it is. Like I said, stuff happens in people's lives. Stuff happens in companies. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and the whole thing, he doesn't care. Like, if he didn't care, he wouldn't have built up his company. You know what I mean? Like, if he didn't care, like... I'm pretty sure the game when it came out, if he didn't, you know, you know, like, it doesn't make sense. Some of these don't make sense at all. And the whole thing that they're uh, not attached or whatever is completely false. They're literally on the forums. They're literally on social media everywhere. They they talk to people. They even talk to the people who talk like this person. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, they fear that our grandchildren not to buy Mountain Blade 3 and ruin its sales. I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Um, these same people who are complaining right now, I bet you if Mom Blade 3 was uh, announced, let's say a couple, not even a couple years, let's say, you know, let's say five, maybe even ten years uh, in the future, they would buy it. I I think they would buy it. I, I'm just saying, I think they would buy it regardless. Uh, forum dwellers are a tiny minority of the player base. Yep, and it's not like they keep give. It's not like we keep giving them money. It's not a pay to win mobile game where you want to keep your whales around. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So, it's like, yeah, they're not happy that their forum shows their game in a poor light. No. They never came on and said they're not happy about it. <laughs> they never not once came on and said that. You know what I mean? They literally always try to be supportive, even to the people who are like this. So, uh, I don't know about that take. Hold on, is my thing frozen? Hello? Hold on. What is going on? Is my thing going or not? What is what is this? Streamlabs, what are you doing? All right, I'm gonna end this off. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but I'm gonna just end this off real quick. Alrighty, and I'm back. Uh, my Streamlabs kind of, uh, I guess it didn't crash, like froze. I thought you guys couldn't hear me, but you guys still could hear me. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just have to edit these two parts together. But alrighty, let's, uh, what were we talking about? Yeah, this guy was talking nonsense. All right, let's see. All right, what else? They aren't afraid. They just don't care. True, brother. That's why they keep responding. Uh, what else we got? Uh, what is this? Come on, bro. Where's the juice? Same here, I will no more buy an unfinished game. EA is the best thing to do to spoil yourself and ruin your gaming experience. Okay. Terrors doesn't fear us, they fear progress. True. <laughs> they fear adding content and deepening diplomacy. That's right, that's right. That's what they said, man. Nice, let's move on. Alright. I don't even know if I want to cover this one. This one's so bad. This one is so bad. I'm still waiting for this guy to post his, like, he said he was going to post, um, what's it called? He was going to post a detailed letter to, uh, no, he didn't say he was going to post it. He said, should, should, uh, should we as the community post a big detailed letter to a tarot old, same as the, uh, mod developers did? And uh, it got a lot of good reviews. Like, yeah, we think we should. I think we should. And I'm going to keep it real with you. He never did it. I'm very, you know what I mean? I'm kind of depressed about that because I said I would cover it. I'm very depressed it never happened. And he just continues with these type of posts that just, you know, are kind of, eh. You know what I mean? It's just like, <sighs> talking about Tales, we need a new Mexico. So people who don't know, uh, Mexico was a developer who used to work at Tale Worlds. He does not work there anymore. He made a goodbye post, uh, for, I, I think it was a couple weeks ago. But yeah, 
he's moved on. He's going to do, uh, you know, he's going to take a break, he said, and he's going to do other stuff. You know what I mean? It is what it is. A lot of people took it to heart because he was on the forums a lot. And uh, people feel like, you know, Terrorworlds is now missing something. But as I stated before, while some devs aren't vocal, it doesn't mean they're not working. And, uh, and like I said before, it's not in their job description to just be on the forums all day. It's great that they are. I'm not going to lie to you. But it's not their job, really. You know what I mean? I know that might hurt a lot of people's feelings and be like, oh, well, no, but they should. I guess. But again, they're not required to do that. They're required to code a game. They're required to develop a game. You know what I mean? It might sound like the hard truth, honor truth, whatever you want, but that's just what it is. Uh, oh, let's, let's see. All right, so he says, I'm sure most of you agree that uh, Mexico and his openness and honesty are really missed here. Yeah, he was a pretty good developer. Mexico went way be, uh, beyond the limits of his role to communicate with the community. Yeah. We just need one member of the dev team to do the same and pick up where Mexico left off, communicating with us on a much more regular basis than the rest of the team. I don't like how you're trying to uh, call out the rest of the team and say like, oh, well, he's this. Like I said before, like putting this whole, putting people on the pedestal thing is like, it's, it's weird. It's weird. And he, even he said it when he was here, like it's weird. You know what I mean? Like uh, he gets help from all the other developers, same way, you know, they get help from him. Like it's a team. And uh, he states, the terror worlds, this would be massively in our in your own interest. It would help keep the community engaged. An engaged community that feels listened to properly is a non-toxic community. That's cap. That's cap. I'm calling that out. Because when he was here, y'all were still the same way. You were still negative. You were still making, you know, posts that made no sense. You were still just, what, that's such. Bro, stop lying, man. I'm sick and tired of this, man. Stop lying. When he was posting all those big threads and this, this, and that, guess what? The forum was still the same way it is today. Just toxic. You know what I mean? So let, let, let's cut all this, like, you know what I mean? Like, this will solve it. This will cut it out. It, it didn't happen before, and it's not going to, you know what I mean? It ain't going to happen. He says, a more content and non-toxic community is really an enormous benefit to your company. Yeah, they can literally go to any anywhere else. Go to Reddit, go to Steam, go to anywhere. Go to, like, Discord groups. Go to YouTube, uh, like, you know what I mean? YouTube groups, you know, they're not negative. Literally go to any other group and they're not negative. You know what I mean? So, yeah. He's supposed to attempt to be positive in the middle of all the recent gloom. I hope they listen. <sighs> this is the guys, this is the guy, this is so bad. <laughs> It's like putting the responsibility on them to make the community more positive. No, bro. The people in the community should be more positive. That's how you make the community more positive. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's like, it's so, come on. Now, let me have this guy say, I've never seen this guy post. Either way, I'm not looking for someone to make me feel good. I want results and work properly prioritized for the game. There you go. There it is. Sensational. Uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. This is how it was before. It's not going to change. Uh, what else we got? See, here we go. Putting on the pedestal again. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, Mexico was, is a really nice guy. If anything, he might... Been a little too open sometimes, but we're all gonna miss him. He really knew his stuff. Okay. All right. Uh. Ah, uh, oh, here we go. We got some more information here. So this guy's saying, "Rip to this guy who was overly negative. Uh, never stayed on topic in any of the forum posts that he actually commented on, and just was an overall troll." He got uh, multiple warnings. He's still not even uh, banned. He's on probation, isn't he? He's up here, isn't he? This guy right here on probation. And also, he tried to make an account uh, while he was uh, currently on a, uh, what do you call it? Like, a, uh, not a permanent uh, termination, but kind of like a, what do you call it? Like a couple days or a week or whatever. He had a week off, and he tried to make another account. And they were trying to ban him, uh, you know. Permanently for that, 
as they should. Most places, that's how it works. If you try to evade a ban, you will get permanently banned. And guess what? They still let him post. Look, he's right here. So this whole, you know what I mean? Look, look, look what he tried to say here. Well, he did something that Terrell was apparently claiming is exclusive right for. He was trying to ruin Terrell's reputation. No, man. I'm sorry. No one took him seriously. One of the people who took him seriously is someone like this who says stuff like this. No one took him seriously. He was overly negative and he didn't stay on topic. It, 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 it was just, it was just, it's, it was spam at that point. You know what I mean? It was literally spam. Um, I think uh, the rant thread he did in the UF dub Terror Worlds was too much for the sensitive moderation team. Or maybe it was unnecessary. It was literally, I covered it too. It was, it was, it, it was so bad. Like, what do you mean? Bro, I swear. This is, there's been this recent climate in the world where like, ah, oh, they're canceling me. Ah, oh, they're doing this. It's like, no, dog. You're just not following the rules, man. You don't follow the rules. Stuff happens, man. You know what I mean? You get banned. You, you get this, that. Like, come on. Relax. Like, people always try to make it seem like to be something that's so much more. And then, like, this recent trend of like, if I get banned, I won. It's like, no, dog. You got deleted, bro. You, you lost. You lost. You hate to see it. You know what I mean? I like the positive attitude, but you hate to see it, bro. You got wrecked. You got clapped. What can I say to you? You know what I mean? It is what it is. Uh, what else? He said, we don't need New Mexico. We need Mexico. Nah, if he wants to do something else in life, he could do something else in life. I don't think, uh, you know, you should let people do what they want to do. This guy is speaking the truth about the utter lack of engagement from Tail Worlds. That's such cow, bro. Bro, people be lying, man. People really be sitting here and just, they, they get on the computer and they're like, what am I going to lie about today? Ah, let's go to our board. And they got like three things ran there. Lack of features. Uh, siege, uh, th what's it called? Siege engine is still not fixed. And the last one, lack of communication. And they just pick one. And every day they go back on the forums and they say the exact same three things. It is crazy to me. It is crazy to me, bro. Come on, man. Uh, what else we got? Oh, nice. Look at this guy right here. Nice. You love to see this, bro. This right here is progress, man. We need more. We need to see more of these tags right here. You know what I mean? Hey, you love to see it. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> this person says, "I feel less confident in the future of this product, bro." Do you think Mexico literally made the whole game? I feel like people have this misconception of like, since he was like, I guess like the most vocal that you know as being the most vocal developer somehow makes it like he did like most of the work like he picked up all the slack he did all the like bro no bro <laughs> he could like if he was the you know if he if he picked up all the slack and he did most of the work this game would not have came out in you know as people like to make fun of it nine years it would have came out in goddamn 60 70 years you know what i mean it takes a team you know what i mean it takes a team to do all this together you know what I mean? One person might be very good at one section, but they're not good at all sections. And they can't cover everything at the same time. It's just like, it would be outrageous. You know what I mean? It, that's just how it is. And I always like to bring back my uh, my serving days. Um, but yeah, I used to, um, early on when I was really young, I used to work at Waffle House. You know what I mean? And uh, bro, Waffle House, I'm going to tell you right now, while they hire anybody, like anybody, Bro, they will make you work like you've never worked before. I say this because they make you do every single, uh, 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 uh like process, uh, like regular restaurants. For example, you have a host. They greet the person. They bring them to the table. Then you have the server. They serve you. They bring you out your drinks. Uh, they put in your food. Uh, then most places have a food runner. Or no, you know, most places they have the cook and they have the expo. The expo, you know, puts all the stuff nicely on the plates. Uh, make sure the cooks has everything for there and they usually have food runners or other service could run food when they're um you know not busy um to the table 
And then once uh, you know the server checks them out, all that and that, make sure they're good. And then you have people who clean the tables. Then you go back there, there's a dishwasher. It's all this team that's working together. Then you have the managers that oversee all that. You know what I mean? That's usually how it works. Bro, in a Waffle House, you have to do every single part of that. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, that doesn't seem like a lot of work. Dog. If you ever worked at a Waffle House at 3 a.m. when like 10 different parties of, you know, mostly drunk and high people walk in and they all want your attention at the same time and you have to literally, uh, you know, as you're greeting this person, you have to check out this person, get that person's food, you have to go wash the dishes here, you have to go do this. They, they make you do every single part of that process. And guess what? Since the culture in Waffle House is people are not caring, they're not going to tip you. And unfortunately, how America works, I know I have a lot of people from overseas. Um, America doesn't pay uh, their, uh, what's it called? Their servers, like actual living wages. They're paid by their tips. You know what I mean? And uh, a lot of people in America, there's this controversy like, oh, well, well, I'm not going to tip because, you know, the, the, the restaurant should pay them more, which is never going to happen, unfortunately, because of American, you know, I don't even know American what, but it, it, ain't, it ain't really going to happen. And unfortunately, if you work at Waffle House, you're going to be making nothing and you're going to be doing all the work. And it sucks. And uh, it's way it's it's and what I'm trying to get to with this analogy is it's way better with a team when you're working at a restaurant, you know what I mean? Where every everybody has this little part of the job they get done to, you know, make the whole experience. And same thing in game development. You know what I mean? You have this whole team, you have the managers, you have the people that work on this part of development, you have people who work on this part of development, you know what I mean? You have the people who uh, deal with the social media, you know, all the that you have people who deal with uh, the business dealings of like, you know, which plow you know all that stuff you, and you got people who who moderate things like people who moderate this forum moderate other places on the internet it's it's all a team that works together to get it all done and with that being said while he might have left that doesn't mean like the game's gonna go completely down because he was carrying all the weight like it was a team effort and it's still a team effort you know what i mean and uh yeah that's where i was getting with that but all right uh, no point in community engagement. Lowell Terrell just cares for money ways. Keep ignoring fan requests and makes false promises. These guys will uh, still praise every garbage hotfix you release. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's exactly what they're doing, man. They just care for money. Bro, people, I'm telling you, they got three things written on a board right when before they go posting on, uh, what's it called? Uh, the forums it's sensational uh, a few a few devs do communicate with, with us you know who they are I do feel like they're somehow not able to, or willing to give us the info we want or maybe they don't want to how about that they don't have to I don't think devs should have to give you know the player everything they want to hear. I don't think devs should literally follow everything that the player wants to be done to the game. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? There's always good suggestions. There's always stuff that they do put in the game that gets posted in suggestion uh, forums and actually gets done. There has been plenty of examples of it. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the game developer doesn't have to, you know, pretty much cater to your every single need. And it's just like a... <sighs> And they don't have to tell you everything either. I feel I feel like people got so spoiled with all these roadmaps being shown and all that. I like a good old surprise. How about that, man? I like that. I like how every time I read a patch notes, I see a surprise in there. You know what I mean? I see like two new features I didn't even know about. Because I, I look at the forums. I look at what the devs are working on. I look at what the devs show us. And it's good to see that some things they don't show. I like being surprised. You know what I mean? It's cool knowing. But when you know everything, it's like, eh. You know what I mean? Like you know exactly what's coming. But when you get surprised and new stuff just pops up, it's like, cool. Let me go explore that. Let me go see that. I think surprises are pretty good, man. I don't know. And yeah, there's probably stuff that they're not supposed to tell you. So what? <laughs> it's like, it's like, bro, you ever worked for a company? There's stuff you can do and stuff you can't do. You, you, you got to follow rules. You, you're working. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it works, you know? I don't know, but I expect that there's probably just as frustrated about this whole thing as we are. Yeah, of course, everybody's frustrated about something, bro. It's work. Like I said again, like, 
work anywhere, bro. Like, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> Jesus has so many pages. I don't want to read all this, to be honest with you. Uh, what else we got? Uh, it's pretty concerning that a single developer gained more value, valuable and honest community engagement than the team than the team whose solely responsible it is to engage the community. That's not true. Like, there's plenty of devs and plenty of community managers who do post on here very regularly, but people don't want to see that, and I've posted it plenty of times. So, yeah, it, this isn't a true statement, unfortunately. Uh, the whole point, as someone pointed out, the whole point of EA is to communicate with your player base and collaborate with them when possible. There you go. When possible. You see that? Not whenever possible. When possible. There it is. At the very least, put up a roadmap. Why? Why is it? Okay, look, I'm going to keep it real with you, man, about these roadmaps. How can I say this? How can I say this? They do have sort of a roadmap. It is not the roadmap with the nice pictures and this and this and that. But to be honest, it doesn't have to be. They tell you what they're currently working on. We get regular updates of what they're currently working on. We get YouTube videos, of, uh, development updates and YouTube videos that they're currently working on. Like, bro, they show you updates that's happening. A roadmap is, it's, I don't think it's good. I'll keep it real with you. You know, and, and very few, I'm going to keep another thing real. Very few games actually stick to roadmaps. They, uh, you know, they kind of dibble and dabble. And at the same time, I, th I think it's just, they told you what's coming up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, they let you know that. Just because there isn't, like, a cool little picture showing off this, this, and that, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Plus, I like the video development updates. I think those are very good. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I guess it's up to the player, right? In my opinion, they don't need to put up a roadmap. Yep, yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, what else we got? Uh, well, at least they have promised a kind of road ahead dev block sometime soon, as they said in the last one. But it better be damn fantastic if they want to get anywhere close to winning back community support and enthusiasm. They're not going to win it back, bro. Unfortunately, the community is going to be always negative. It is. It's the truth, man. It's just been like that from the start. And uh, this whole, like, win back, like, bro, it's literally just the forums. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. It's literally just the forums. The reason I, 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 I like, look at the forums stuff like that is because, like, Bro, it is literally just a lot of people just not telling the truth and a lot of people being negative. That's all it is. You go into any other community, you know what I mean? People are uplifting other people. People are talking about positive things. But on the forums, everyone's just negative, man. <laughs> but it's content, so I'm here. Uh... uh next one. Uh, keep fights after sieges, good idea, but, okay. This person says, I think that keep fights are making you more vulnerable with Parma death enabled. You cannot decide which troops you take into a keep fight. No matter what, your party leaders in the armies and companions in your party are going to participate. That being said, your vassals and companions are exposed to enemy troops. In my experience, they are more likely getting shot by archers, shooting out of their ankle. I lost four party leaders and three companions like that today. I do like the taste of... Uh, war band in the sieges, but in combination with the high death rate, I'd rather just simulate the keep fight, knowing that my companions are safe that way. I don't know how others feel about it, but I think it would be neat if we could have an option able that you can decide which troops are going to participate in the keep fight, like you can do in hideout fights, else it could be another encounter where your important troops can die during a siege while the AI is not affected by that at all. I personally don't think that you should be able to choose who fights the keep battles. Um, Here's why. It's supposed to be like this realistic kind of like, not realistic, but kind of like this feeling of like, you know, you're rushing in and then you get to the keep doors and whoever makes it through goes to attack there. But at the same time, they can do it. I'm not opposed to it anyways. I think it, it could be a good option as well. And they obviously can do it because they've done it for hideouts. It could be kind of the same system for it. I don't disagree. I think simulating the fight is also good. I don't know if that is an option. I, I recently made a video and I can't 
for the life of me remember if that it is an option to simulate the keep battle itself but um another thing is they are currently still playing with the perma death um you know the, the 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 probability that your character will die um in certain scenarios so yeah right now it's still not perfectly aligned or like not perfectly uh optimized so there is going to be you know excess deaths of stuff like and stuff like that but um eh, i think over time it, it will get better but i think if you are playing with permadeath then obviously you always or you're always taking the risk in multiple fights and um i think uh you know I think if you're gonna take over a town or a castle, that's a pretty big uh, event in the in the world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, in whatever save you're playing, because you're about to take over that place. So if you do lose some people, I feel like you know it, it's a trade-off in a way. If you're obviously if you're playing with permadeath, again, I think it's it's a little high about the numbers that can possibly die now. But I think over time it will get uh, better and will get better optimized. But uh, yeah, would be a cool feature if it's more balanced. I agree. Uh, what else we got? Oh, we got some dev responses. Sensational. All right. Uh, okay, so we have this player right here, and then we have some dev responses. All right, so this player states, Well, I can see two things now player wants in keep battle. All right, let me know what the player wants. The player should be able to, uh, to do the keep battle as well, where player is the defender and AI is the attacker. Okay. And for two, he says, uh, we should be able to choose what kind of troops you want us to go into the keep battle. Well, I find the keep battle is almost the same as Warband. Would be glad if they add some unique features in keep battles. Okay. Uh, all right, so developer responds for two. I like the idea and ready forward to thread to the relevant designer. Okay, obviously about being able to choose your troops. I think they could get past easily. He says, not too sure how quirky it gets with the various menus, but I'm sure it will be discussed. Okay. And then for one, which is the... Uh, you know, the player being able to play as defender, he says, I don't really think it's a worthwhile goal. The player is unlikely to experience it because chances are good they will already be knocked out on the wall. The defensive mission also struggles with a conflict between effective defense, aka forcing all AI into their tactical position, and player agency being able to give orders. Okay, it makes sense. I know people are going to be like, oh, so it's too much work or whatever, but I think it makes sense. You know what I mean? What he's saying is like, you know, it's probably not going to happen most of the time. If they're going to go down, they're going to go down at the wall. Um, and then the whole the defensive thing. I get it. I understand it. It, it would happen such a minuscule amount that it, it's like probably won't even happen in most saves that people do. Unless they try to, you know, actually force it to happen. You know? I agree. And then we have another player saying, any... Are there any thoughts about improving the command orders for siege battles? I find the commands work well in field battle, but usually disrupt a siege attack as defense. At the moment, I find it better to just let the AI run its course. I agree. And then the dev says, There are no concrete plans to fundamentally change the order scheme, uh, to my knowledge, though this is not my area of expertise. Okay. I do know that there is discussion on how we may better explain siege mechanics and controls to players, but the, probably the biggest priority lies with improvements to the way the missions plays out for the AI, ladders, siege towers, and other behavior. Would you look at there? There it is, baby. There it is. So obviously, they're looking into it. I know people are going to say it's too late, but I'm going to keep it on the upside and say good that they're looking into it. Um, you know. I think that's a good. I think I think it's a good step. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm gonna keep it positive. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna dwell on the past. I'm gonna keep it positive. Alrighty, we got a lot of dev responses here. Ooh, sensational. We have more on the second page. Oh my god. Oh my god. I might have to save this for another video because we're getting kind of close. And it's getting kind of late. And kind of late. I mean, it's kind of early. It's literally 7 a.m. and the sun is going up, and I have to go to sleep. I got work tomorrow. <laughs> um, I think I am going to end it off here. I'm going to continue this in the next session. All right, boys. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.